everybody Ann here sitting here in the tiny house having my coffee with all of you well it is a very rainy kind of just miserable day today and uh, this morning when I got up uh, the routine is as I get up I let Judy out and go take care of the chickens so I did that but now I've got Judy's lead to where I have to put her on a leash to take her out to the lead because I've got it so that she can't get up to the things that are against the tiny house anymore she can't dig in my garden beds uh, she can't get up underneath the, the tiny house and dig in the mud and come out all covered and whatnot so she's got plenty of room to run still she just can't get up and and do that so I had her on her lead and it's damp outside and this is before I had to go feed the chickens she pulled me real hard and I fell and I hurt my back and it's pretty sore and it's it's made worse by the fact that uh, I am totally out of my naproxen um, and that's all I take for pain anyhow. Um, she didn't mean it. She wasn't being ugly. It's just she was excited. She wanted to get out. The ground was slippery and it was uneven ground and uh, yeah so I fell so my back is just absolutely killing me in my right hip so <sighs> so I had to try and do my little business with the chickens now I didn't let them out they're all still in the coop the girls are separated um, I had to try and get up into that van and my back was killing me my right hip and give them their little food things in the morning and whatnot change the water for the little girls because they don't they don't have like an actual feeder in their little pen and it was it took every bit of strength I had to get out and take care of those chickens today so <sighs> Judy's sitting there looking at me right now giving me those little doe eyes she's such a pretty girl anyhow so today I thought I would talk about well what it's been like for me getting used to living 100% off grid it's been a learning curve oh Judy don't she's gonna knock something over <sighs> she's wearing me out you guys it's been a learning curve, uh, but it's been really wonderful. It's Everything is harder work. I mean, you have to take two or three steps to accomplish something that most of you, you know, you go turn on a light switch or you flush a toilet or something like that. So this is what it's been like for me living off grid. Okay, first of all, no running water. Um, I have to get water. So I've got that water catchment system out there. And I do have a hose and I do have spigots on the bottom of them uh, on the bottom of them but I still um, have to haul that water to where I need to haul it to and depending on whether it's a five gallon bucket or something smaller I'm finding that I'm having trouble lifting the full five gallon buckets of water um, thank goodness I've got that um, little wagon thing because that certainly helps but um, so uh, what I found works for me you know, bringing the water in that I'm going to prepare for drinking water that I will pour. What are you doing, Judy? <laughs> She's just right up here by me. I think she feels bad. Um, you're a good girl. I love you. I'll, I'll fill up a couple gallon jugs, and I'll put the, that through the Berkey, and that way I don't have to lift a big five-gallon bucket. But, um, you know, I have to think about water conservation. A lot of people just think of something as simple as rinsing vegetables. You just turn on that faucet and just rinse and rinse and rinse away. Well, I can't do that. I have to be careful how much water that I used in everything that I do because it's just not abundant for me right now. Um, and then we talked about filtering water. I have to filter water. Um, washing clothes. I wash my clothes outside. Um, I use a washboard and I have to wring it out by hand because I've been unable to find a wringer that's any good. Um, and I've also found that I tend to wear clothes longer. It's really funny. Um, Mr. Lucas' son's wife, his, his daughter-in-law, her family came and visited. And, um, hang on a second. I've got to tend to Betty. She, I mean, Judy, she's getting ready to, yeah, hang on. Hopefully she'll stay up there for a little while. It's hard for me to get anything done because she will just get up and start barking until I pay attention to her. So, anyhow. Yeah, doing laundry is a big, huge chore because I have to use a lot of water. You know, I rinse it. I mean, you have to wash it first, and then I usually end up rinsing it twice just because, and this is another thing, too. I tend to wear my clothes longer. If they're not practically, in fact, 
um, Mr. Lucas' daughter-in-law's family came to visit, and they had um, this cute little boy with them, and he got to come and, you know, play with the chickens and feed the chickens and stuff like that. And he, he whispered something to his grandma, um, and I didn't hear it, and I said, what did he say? And, and because she scolded him, and, I, and she told me what he said. He says, why is she wearing the same clothes two days in a row? And I explained, you know what, my clothes have practically got to be up and walking on their own before I wash them. So um, I tend to wear clothes longer uh, than I would otherwise. Um, you know, and, and stuff like doing dishes, I just can't run a big, huge sink full of dirty dishes. I have to clean them as I use them, one by one. And what I'll usually do is just wipe out the contents on the inside with a paper towel. And then I use a spray sanitizer um, to clean it further and wipe that down. Uh, Francie from Finding Joy made me scrubbies and I use the scrubbies and that gets off any particulate and whatnot. Um, and then I spray it down with a sanitizer. And if I run out of sanitizer, I'll use vinegar, you know, vinegar and water and just spray on it. Um, so I don't, I just don't run a whole ton of water to wash dishes. Now something's really bad and it needs to be soaked. Like today I made potato soup again. That pot's going to be a mess. Um, I'll have to fill it with water and kind of soak it a little bit to get it clean. Um, you know, in bathing and showers, you have to think about that too. Yes, you can capture, um, you know, water to use to water the plants and whatnot, but I found that there's very little water left over that comes off of me after I take a shower because I use so little water to do that and um, most of the time I'll take little bird baths um, and I've got plenty of baby wipes those really come in handy I use those religiously and otherwise you know I don't take a full soaking shower every day um, in fact I need to wash my hair yeah I think I need to wash my hair today so you have to think about those kinds of things too. You have to make some sacrifices. Um, and But I think they're worth it. I really think they're worth it. All right. And then there's the um, issue of no electricity. I have to think about conserving electricity. Most people just go to, you know, a light switch and turn it on a light. They've got their whole place illuminated all the time. Um, sometimes they don't even think about turning on, off and on, you know, a light switch. Um, electric everything. Well, I am completely 100% on solar power. So I have to really be mindful about how much electricity I use and I have to kind of pick my battles and pick and choose things. Um, the refrigerator uses a lot of energy. I can't keep the refrigerator running 24 seven. So I sometimes default, most of the time default to my um, ice chest and I keep ice in it and that's good because the ice can be used well to keep my food cold but then it melts and I use it for drinking water. Um, I didn't used to filter it but now that I've got the Berkey filter I'm, I'm, I'm definitely filtering it now. Um, so that's good, you know, the ice situation, the ice chest, it's kind of like a two-pronged thing. I've got two uses for the ice so um, that works great. And then you got to think about things that, you know, you may have never even known about or even thought about. You know, your amps and wattage uh, that you're using, your load that is on your batteries, whether or not it's going to overload your inverter. Um, and you have to think about all of those things that a lot of people take for granted. And I don't take any of that for granted. That's why anytime there's sun in the sky, it makes me happy. Conversely, any time it rains now, that makes me happy too because then I'm going to have water. And right now, my water store is really good. I've got plenty of water. Um, yeah, and you have to think about food, food prep and cooking too when you're off-grid. Um, most of what I cook, I use propane for or wood. Wood outside on the rocket stove. And that thing works so good. It's just... It's a lot of fun sitting out there by that rocket stove and cooking stuff. So um, that's the cooking is the least of my worries. Uh, the biggest issue is with keeping it cool in the summertime. And then inside, I am going to be able to keep it warm because of the wood burning stove. Uh, and then you also, you know, sometimes people take for granted the weather. I can't take the weather for granted. I absolutely have to know what the temperature is going to be every day. I have to know how hot it's going to be, how cold it's going to be, because before the chickens even, um, 
if it was too hot in this tiny house, I couldn't leave Betty, well, when she was alive, and I, I couldn't leave Judy by herself inside the cabin because it would get, you know, 110, 115 degrees in here, and it would just be cruel. So I would have to plan my days around, you know, the weather and whether or not it's going to be too hot inside for my beloved Judy. Um, and I now I have to think about the chickens. Uh, I have to know how cold it's going to get down to because those chickens still don't have all the feathers. Now I know that people have said, oh, you don't have to use that heating mat anymore. Well, I think I do. Um, I pay a lot of attention to uh, Jeff at Bobblehead Homestead. He's kind of like a chicken expert. Um, and I did ask him a question a while ago um, about baby chicks and when they're ready to go outside. And um, he basically said, well, if if they've started getting their feathers and if it's going to stay above 60, then they should probably be okay. Well, it's dropping down into the 40s now. And uh, those little baby chickens don't have all their feathers yet. So, yeah, I have to be able to provide them with some heat. But the good thing is, is I got that little heating plate thingy and it doesn't use hardly any solar. So I can keep that going all night long and they stay nice and nice and warm. So, so far, all six of those black chickens are doing really super good. Um, you know, and staying warm. Uh, we already talked about the wood-burning stove and the fact that uh, I'm going to have that installed very soon, hopefully. I just got to, I have to have a few more pieces to the puzzle before I can properly install it, but um, it's going to be nice, and I've got plenty of wood. I've already got some stacked up behind the shed. There's plenty more out there, and uh, I did ask Mr. Lucas if, well, I asked Mr. Lucas if he would let um, Cody borrow the chainsaw, and he's like, ain't nobody using my chainsaw. And I'm like, well, will you teach me how to use the chainsaw? And he's like, I'm the only one who uses my chainsaw. <laughs> and I think there's a thing about that. People and chainsaws. My son back in Ohio, he does tree work. And, um, you know, he loves his chainsaw. And then Andy from uh, uh, Andy's Tennessee Life and Homestead, he, when I lived on my old property, he came over and cut up a bunch of stuff and everything. And he had his chainsaw with him. And I, I remember asking him, can you teach me how to do it? And he just said, I'll do it. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. But anyhow, I'm just um, rambling. And the next thing you have to think about is elimination. Sorry about that. I have to keep stopping and starting to because my phone storage is getting filled up and I have to transfer things to the SD card. Anyhow, I'm going to try and wrap this up very quickly. Elimination. Everybody does it the way I do it may be a little bit different than the way you do it. I use a composting toilet and I've done a lot of research on it and I've tried different kinds of bulk materials. Right now I'm using pine shavings just because I have limited storage space. I don't want to have big bags of pine shavings that I'm using for the chickens and big bags of mulch that I'm using for the composting toilet. So I'm using pine shavings and it works pretty good. If you put enough of it in there it'll cover the odors and you're, you're going to be just fine. But I have found that the cheapest mulch you can find, plain old brown mulch, is works the best. It covers the odor. I even tried a more expensive version once from Walmart, and it didn't cover the odor as well. It just didn't work as well. Um, Lowe's, you can get a big, huge bag for, I don't know, it's like five, six, seven dollars, something like that. And um, it works great. But... Um, and my next topic is storage space. I have to consider how much storage I have, where I'm going to put it. You know, you can't. I can't throw stuff out in the shed because it's so damp out there and there's critters. I don't want critters getting into my bulk material, especially if it's going out to the chickens. You know, I don't want rats. And I don't think I got rats, but I think there's mice out there. Um, so I have to think about storage space. And you can't just have a bunch of stuff laying around if you don't have room for it to store it safely. And I'm going to be having, you know, chicken feed and everything I'm going to have to have and find a safe place for. So storage is a big issue. So you really have to think, or at least I have had to think, about really minimalizing everything in my life. Is it getting too dark in here? Can you still see me? Anyhow. Um, so I try not to keep anything that I don't really need. Um, if I want something, you know, I have to think really, really hard if I'm going to want to bring that in and store it somewhere 
if something else that I actually need needs to go in its place. And I'm running out of storage. I'm just looking around right now. And <sighs> Once I get these walls finished and I'll, I'll be able to get some more cabinetry up and stuff like that, it's going to be um, a better s situation for me storage-wise. But you have to think about that too. You know, if you are going to live a minimalistic lifestyle, you can't always bulk up on tons of stuff, tons of food, you know. Um, you kind of got to think about... Well, what can we store safely and neatly so, you know, the food doesn't go bad or that you're not totally tripping it over all the time? Anyhow, so yeah, that's those are the kinds of things in my life that have changed since I went off grid and I chose this life of minimalism. And I have to tell you that there are some inconveniences and you, you have to give up a, um, a lot of things and a lot of comforts, but in exchange you've got freedom. I don't have an electric bill. I don't have a water bill. I I don't have a heat bill. Um, of course, you know, I have to buy propane and stuff like that. So that is kind of like a bill. But it is just a life that is uncluttered. And I love it. I don't think I could ever go back to traditional on-grid living ever again to be tied into, I don't know what to call it, just this this system where you're being sucked dry of all your resources when there are resources out there that you can tap into yourself for free. Anyhow, huh, that's too long. This video has gotten too long. So, well, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.